In this video, we will practice sketching derivatives and second derivatives, and then analyzing some multiple choice questions about sketching derivatives. First, we're going to review some information that's going to be very helpful later in the video. We're going to be talking about concavity and increasing and decreasing, and I do have separate videos on that if you would like to review those topics separately. When f prime of x, the first derivative is greater than zero, f is increasing. When f prime of x is less than zero, f is decreasing. And when f prime of x is equal to zero, f has a horizontal tangent line. This makes sense because if this is the graph of f, right here, f prime of x is equal to zero, so the graph has a horizontal tangent line. f is increasing on this interval, and this means that the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. f prime of x is greater than zero, so f is increasing. And over here, f prime of x is less than zero. The slopes of the tangent lines are negative, so f is decreasing. When f double prime of x, the second derivative is greater than zero, f prime of x is increasing. So the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing. So f is concave up. When f double prime of x, the second derivative is less than zero, f prime of x, the first derivative is decreasing. So f is concave down. The slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. We can use all of this information to sketch derivatives. And here are some other shortcuts that you can use that you probably already know. If the original function f is linear, f prime will be a constant, a horizontal line. If f the original function is quadratic, its derivative will be linear. And if the original function is cubic, the derivative will be quadratic. Given the function f below, sketch f prime and f double prime. f is a parabola or a quadratic, so we know that f prime will be linear and f double prime will be a constant. In order to properly sketch a derivative, one method that you can use is to make a table of values of x and then values of f prime of x when you're looking at the original function f. And then you always want to identify points that are going to help you, like relative mins or relative maxes. So we have a relative minimum here at x equals 3. At the relative minimum, f prime of x is going to be equal to 0. So when x is 3, f prime of x is 0. And then just so we can get some other points on our f prime graph, I'm going to test f prime of 2 and f prime of 1, and then f prime of 4 and 5. Now, these are just going to be estimations because we are just trying to sketch the derivatives. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get the general shape of the graph. So let's take a look at what would f prime of 2 be. So if we're taking f prime of 2, that looks to be about negative 1. And then when we take f prime of 1, that's going to be about negative 3 maybe. And again, I'm just estimating here. And then f prime of 4, that is going to be about 1. f prime of 5, that will be about 3. So now I'm going to go onto my graph for f prime and start plotting these points. And I'm getting that this graph is going to be linear, which makes sense. If I want to double check what I'm going to do, I see that f prime is negative or below 0 on the interval from negative infinity to 3. This makes sense because the original function f is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to 3. And then it's increasing from 3 to infinity, and f prime of x is greater than 0 for 3 to infinity. So that makes perfect sense. Now to sketch f double prime of x, I'm not even going to make a table for this one. All that I need to do, I know that this slope is positive, and I know that the slope is about 1, it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plot positive 1 as a constant for my f double prime function. Given the function g below, sketch g prime. So when I make my table for finding values of g prime, I will have x and g prime of x. And then the first values that I'm going to stick on, I'm going to stick on, it looks like this is negative 1.2, where I have this relative maximum. So x is going to be negative 1.2. I'm going to stick on x equals negative 1. And I'm going to stick on x equals 0 and x equals 0.5 and x equals 1.2, because that's where I have my other relative maximum. And then I will put 2 and 2.5. Now I'm going to approximate the values of g prime of each of these. So g prime of negative 1.2, I know that that is going to be 0. g prime of negative 1, that looks to be about negative 1. g prime of 0, I know is going to be 0, because there's a horizontal tangent line. G prime of 0.5, that's right here, that's maybe like 1 half, so I'm going to say that's 0.5. G prime of 1.2, G prime of 1.2 is actually undefined because this is a place where we can't find the derivative because it's a corner in the graph. So DNE right there, that just means that I'm going to have an open circle at that point. And then G prime of 2, it looks like that's about negative 0.5 or negative 1 half. 
And that's going to be the same at 2.5. So that's also negative 0.5. Now I'm going to come over here and plot my points and then start sketching my graph. So this does not give me a whole lot of indication about how I'm supposed to connect these. I mean, I know I'm supposed to connect these two and then that one like that. But then what, what happens on the other side here? Well, I can see that G is increasing on this interval, which means that G prime of X is going to be positive. So it's going to be positive there. And then since we cannot find the derivative at an endpoint, the derivative is actually going to be undefined at those endpoints. So it'll be an open circle at the endpoint right there. We can see that at X equals 1.2, G prime of X almost had a horizontal tangent line, which means that G prime of 1.2 was almost zero. So we can say G prime of 1.1 is almost zero. So we would plot 1.1, 0. So our graph will then look like that. At 1.2, though, the derivative is undefined because we have a corner in the graph. So this means that we will have an open circle right there. And then the graph is going to pick back up right down here at negative 0.5. And then we will connect these two points. And then at x equals 3, it will go all the way until x equals 3. And then we have an open circle there. So that is a very, very rough and tiny sketch of our derivative. The graph of the function f is shown to the right. Which of the following could be the graph of f prime, the derivative of f? Let's look at the defining features of this graph of f. We have a horizontal tangent line right before x equals 2, and we have a horizontal tangent line at what appears to be x equals 0. This means that f prime of 0 will need to be 0, and f prime of maybe 1.8 will also need to be 0. So let's look at the graph that matches those features. Well, we have f prime of 0 is equal to 0 right here, if this is our graph of f prime, and f prime of approximately 1.8 is equal to 0. So this one is a potential contender. However, this one says that we would also have a horizontal tangent line at x equals 2.5. And if we look at what's happening at 2.5 on our original graph of f, we do not have a horizontal tangent line. So choice D will not be our answer. Choice C does not have f prime of 1.8 equaling 0, so that one's out. Choice A, it looks like f prime of 0 is equal to 0, and f prime of 1.8, or around 1.8, that appears to be 0, so A could be one of our answers. Let's just check B. f prime of 0 is equal to 0. f prime of 1.8, that is not 0. So this means that A is our answer. That could be the graph that represents f prime, the derivative of this one. The graph of the function f is shown to the right. Which of the following could be the graph of f prime, the derivative of f? Let's look at the defining features of the graph. The first thing is that we have a horizontal tangent line at x equals 0. So f prime of 0 is going to need to be 0. The graph of f prime should pass through the point 0, 0. b does not pass through the point 0, 0. So that one's out. To the left of 0, the slopes of the tangent lines are negative. If we draw some tangent lines on there, all of the slopes are going to be negative. So we know that f prime is going to have to be in the negative range when it is less than 0. For graph D, it's in the positive range. So graph D is not going to be our answer. To the right of zero, all of the slopes of the tangent lines or the derivative is going to be positive. So it's going to be in the positive zone when we are to the right of zero. So right now we're stuck between choice A and choice C. So now we need to use some information about the second derivative. So we're gonna to have to start talking about points of inflection a little bit. So let's talk about the points of inflection. So it looks like our graph of F is changing from concave down to concave up at x equals one, negative 1, and then our graph of f is changing from concave up to concave down right at x equals 1. This means that we have points of inflection at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, approximately. This means that the graph of f prime, the derivative, should be changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. If we look at choice C, this one is not ever changing from increasing to decreasing. It's always increasing. But choice A, right around x equals negative 1, it's changing from decreasing to increasing. And then right around x equals 1, it's changing from increasing to decreasing. So choice A is our correct answer. So the general method that you use when you're dealing with these is first you look for the defining features. Then you look for information about where f prime would be positive or negative by looking at where the original graph of f is increasing or decreasing. And then if you still don't have enough information, then you can start looking at points of inflection and connecting it to the second derivative. The points of inflection of the original graph f are where the first derivative will have relative extrema, or be changing from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. For a function g of x, it is known that g prime of x is less than 0 and g double prime of x is greater than 0 for all x. 
which of the following tables could represent g of x? Now we're going the other way. We have information about the derivative and the second derivative, and they're asking us which could represent the original function. If g prime of x is less than zero, this means that g is always going to be g decreasing. So information that we know about g, g is decreasing. So we can eliminate any graphs where g is increasing at any point. g is increasing in answer choice a because g of negative three is four, and then g of zero is five, and then g of three is nine. So a will not be our correct answer. g is also increasing in answer choice c. It's going one, two, four, eight, 16. G is decreasing in answer choice B, and G is decreasing in answer choice D. Now let's move on to the information that we were given about the second derivative. We also know that G double prime of X is greater than zero. This means that G is going to be concave up. If a function is both decreasing and concave up, it's going to look something like this. It's concave up, but it's still decreasing. So to determine how quickly the slopes of the tangent lines are changing, what I'm going to do is make a little difference chart right besides this chart. So what is the difference between 21 and 11? Well, you must have had to subtract 10 to get there. The difference here will be negative 6, negative 2, and negative 1. Since these values are increasing, this means that g prime of x is increasing, which means that g double prime of x is greater than 0. So b is probably our correct answer, but let me also check d. So difference between 24 and 22, you had to subtract 2, and then negative 4, negative 5, and negative 11. So in this case, the values of g prime are decreasing. When g prime of x is decreasing, g double prime of x is less than 0. And we need g double prime of x to be greater than 0. So b is our correct answer.